Hello everyone. Have you ever heard of a guy called Protagoras? He was a philosopher from ancient Greece who had some pretty interesting ideas about knowledge and truth. He lived way back in the 5th century BC and was known for his teachings on rhetoric, language, and the art of arguing. But what really made him stand out was his theory of relativism. He believed that everything we know is relative to our own experiences basically. There's no such thing as an objective truth. And while that might sound pretty out there, his ideas actually sparked a ton of debate among other philosophers of his time, like Plato and Aristotle. Now, you might be wondering why you should care about some philosopher who lived thousands of years ago. Well, that's exactly what we're going to explore in this episode. We're going to chat about Protagoras' ideas on knowledge, truth, and ethics, and talk about why they still matter in today's world. So grab a seat and join us for a fun and thought-provoking discussion about Protagoras and his radical theories. Protagoras' theory of relativism is one of his most famous contributions to philosophy. So, what exactly is relativism? Well, it's the idea that truth and knowledge are relative to the individual and their experiences. In other words, what's true for one person might not be true for another. Protagoras took this idea to the extreme by famously stating that Man is the measure of all things. This means that individuals are the ultimate judges of truth and morality, and that there's no objective standard to measure these things against. This statement caused quite a stir among other philosophers, who saw it as a radical departure from the traditional idea of objective truth. Protagoras' relativism applied to knowledge and truth in a few different ways. First, he believed that knowledge was always changing and evolving based on new experiences and perspectives. Second, he believed that all beliefs were equally valid, since they were based on individual experience. Finally, he believed that there was no absolute truth, everything was relative to the individual and their experiences. While Protagoras' ideas might seem pretty out there, they actually had a huge impact on philosophy and continue to be debated today. In the next few episodes, we'll dive deeper into his ideas on ethics, education, and more, and talk about why they're still relevant in today's world. Protagoras' theory of relativism had important implications for epistemology and ethics. Let's start with epistemology. Protagoras believed that knowledge was always changing and evolving based on new experiences and perspectives. This means that what we know and understand today might not be the same as what we know and understand tomorrow. Protagoras' emphasis on experience as the basis of knowledge challenged the traditional idea of knowledge as something that was fixed and eternal. Instead, he believed that knowledge was something that was constantly in flux and that individuals had the power to shape it through their own experiences. Now, let's talk about ethics. Protagoras believed that morality was also relative to the individual and their experiences. This means that what's right or wrong for one person might not be right or wrong for another. Protagoras' emphasis on the individual as the ultimate judge of morality challenged the traditional idea of morality as something that was objective and universal. However, Protagoras' relativism also had some potential downsides. For example, if there's no objective standard for truth and morality, how do we know what's right or wrong? And if all beliefs are equally valid, how do we make decisions and navigate complex ethical issues? Despite these challenges, Protagoras' ideas continue to be debated and explored today. In the next few episodes, we'll dive deeper into his ideas on education, rhetoric, and more, and talk about why they're still relevant in today's world. Protagoras' theory of relativism has important implications for our understanding of knowledge and truth, but how can we apply these ideas to real-life situations? Let's explore some examples of how relativism can be applied in practice. One example is the field of cultural anthropology. Anthropologists often study different cultures and societies and try to understand their beliefs and practices from the perspective of the people who live in those cultures. This approach recognizes that what might be true or important in one culture might not be true or important in another. By adopting a relativistic perspective, anthropologists can avoid imposing their own cultural values and biases onto the cultures they're studying. Adopting a relativistic perspective can help anthropologists avoid imposing their own values and biases onto the cultures they're studying. 
For example, if an anthropologist from a Western culture were studying a traditional African culture that practiced female genital mutilation, they might be tempted to view this practice as barbaric and immoral. However, by adopting a relativistic perspective, the anthropologist can recognize that this practice is seen as an important cultural tradition in that society. This doesn't mean that the anthropologist has to condone the practice, but by understanding its cultural context, they can approach it with more nuance and empathy. Another example is in the field of politics. Political debates often center around competing ideas and beliefs about what's right or wrong, or what policies will be effective or not. By recognizing the relativity of these beliefs and ideas, we can have more productive conversations and debates. Instead of trying to impose our own beliefs onto others, we can try to understand where they're coming from and engage in a more open and respectful dialogue. For example, in a political debate about immigration, someone who holds a strict anti-immigration stance might be more likely to listen to the perspectives of immigrants and their advocates if they recognize that their own beliefs are not absolute and universal truths, but are shaped by their own cultural and historical context. Finally, Adopting a relativistic perspective in our own personal beliefs and experiences can help us to be more humble and open-minded. By recognizing that our own beliefs and experiences are shaped by our own individual perspectives and histories, we can approach them with more nuance and empathy. For example, if someone has a strong belief in a particular religion, they might be more willing to listen to the perspectives of people from other religions or no religion at all recognizing that their own beliefs are not necessarily absolute truths, but are shaped by their own cultural and historical context. Overall, adopting a relativistic perspective can help us to be more understanding, empathetic, and open-minded towards others. By recognizing the relativity of our own beliefs and experiences, we can approach the world with more humility and curiosity, and learn from the diversity and complexity of the world around us. And that, dear listeners, brings us to the end of our episode on Protagoras' theory of relativism. We hope that you found this discussion informative and thought-provoking. Protagoras' ideas continue to influence philosophy and many other fields to this day, challenging us to question our assumptions about knowledge, truth, and morality. We encourage you to continue exploring this topic on your own, and to engage in conversations with others who may have different perspectives. By doing so, we can all become more open-minded and understanding of the diverse and complex world around us. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to our podcast. Your support helps us to continue producing high-quality content like this, and to reach more listeners who may be interested in these ideas. Thank you for listening, and until next time, keep questioning and exploring.